Yo, what is up guys? I uh, wanted to do a video today about how to install um, Linux in 2023. As installing Linux today is, I would say, relatively easy um, versus, you know, like five years ago, 10, maybe 10, maybe 15 years ago, I would say. Um, you know, a lot of things have been streamlined on, on Linux now. And, and so I wanted to make a video about how to install uh, Linux. And <clears throat> there's a bunch of different, you know, uh, distros, we call them, uh, that you can choose from. We're going to be installing uh, Fedora uh, for today. And I would say Fedora as it provides a, I would say a good mix of updates in terms of it being mostly leading edge. It's not as leading edge as Arch, uh, but it's a lot lot better in terms of something, running something like pop os or um or like stable debian or like linux mint where these those distros they get updated uh, a bit slower some mostly like a lot slower um but fedora is basically has a feature update every six months um and then uh gets relatively quick updates where the the updates that, that fedora receives are relatively tested before they come out so they're not like arch where they'll just come out as soon as they're up um, like uploaded um fedora goes through tests um you know, and you'll get them, I would say, in a more stable fashion after like testing is done. So one of the first things that I would do when you know installing a distro is to actually grab the ISO of the distro that you want. So for this one, it's going to be Fedora, but you know you can choose basically any option that you think you will like um, in terms of maybe like the desktop environment that it uses. Um, so for us, we're going to go to the Fedora website, which is called fedoraproject.org, and you want to click the latest release, which is called 38. Um, now there is different options that you can choose from. Uh, there is workstation, server, IoT, cloud, and core OS. Um, we're going to be choosing the workstation one because it's more of the um, user-friendly experience. Um, but you know, if if you like, um, I don't know, you want something a bit more secure and protective, um, you can use Fedora Core OS, which is basically a containerized version of Fedora, and basically you run these apps in out only like what's it called it's not in the root directory so the things that you install can't access that root directory um they're in their own little little container which is the name implies um, but for us we're going to be choosing the workstation so you want to click download now and you can um, grab the ISO right here. Now, if you don't want to grab the ISO, uh, you can actually use the Fedora Media Writer, which is a really good uh, media writer if you want to flash any other distros, including Fedora. Um, but let's say you don't want to grab the ISO and flash it with like Belina Etcher, which is a very popular app for like flashing um, USB sticks with different things like distros. Um, but if you don't like that, you can use Fedora Media Writer. It works on Windows, Mac, and of course it works on Linux. It's actually pretty installed on Linux as well when you install Fedora. So, uh, you know, you want to grab the ISO, we already have it. Um, we actually already have it on a, a USB stick, so we don't have to worry about flushing it, but basically, you know, you want to download the ISO, grab a Belina Etcher, and then, you know, select your USB drive, um, and then the image, and then it will flush it for you. It may take a while, it'll probably do some checking after it's done flushing, and then basically you want to uh, boot into it, which is what we'll go into next. All right, and uh, now that we are booted into Fedora, it's going to say, Welcome to Fedora. This live media can be used to install Fedora or as a temporary system. Installation can be started at any time using the install icon and activities. So, of course, you want to do install Fedora, and it's going to bring up a installation um, application. And in future releases, uh, Fedora may have a different installation app, which is going to be like a web-based installation, I've heard. Uh, which it does look really cool um, as a lot of people don't like this installation um, application for installing like um, Fedora <laughs> but uh, for me I'm going to pick here, I'm going to pick English, I'm going to pick Australian uh, you want to click continue and it's going to bring up some other things you can go to your date and time you want to click you know I'm going to choose Melbourne because that would be my time zone um, and then you want to click your installation destination and of course there's like this is what you pick your drive just have a tick here on mine i would leave everything mostly um automatic um, unless you want to do some manual partitioning uh 
I wouldn't recommend it if you don't know what you're doing, but if you do know what you're doing, then sure, go to uh, the manual installation. Um, if you're running on something like a dual boot, uh, your second partition will probably show up, um, so you can pick that one to install alongside uh, Windows. Uh, but for me, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna install Fedora as I actually already have Fedora installed on this laptop. Uh, but basically, yeah, you want to pick your drive, click on. It's probably going to ask for reclaim space, and you want to delete everything off the drive and let it um, reclaim the space. Um, and then when you click on, you click install. It's going to download some things. It's going to create the partitions. It's going to format your drive. Um, and then after that's done, uh, you basically just want to reboot um, and then unplug the USB after it like basically gets out of the um, out of the live environment. All right, and now as we can see here, we are now booted into Fedora. I actually already have a couple extensions installed, which I'll talk about later. Um, but I guess I'll turn off the extension that we have, which is called uh, Dash to Panel. And this is what the the vanilla version of GNU would actually look like when you first boot, and it has like the app icons here. Also, by the way, um, I'm actually uh, using a, a laptop to install uh, Fedora on this as my main PC. I'm running Fedora at the moment on my main PC, and I don't want to. Uh, you know, factory reset that. Um, so that's what I wanted to do is I wanted to use this really, I would say shitty um, laptop that honestly uh, doesn't have the best processor. It's an i3 50, uh, 50, it's an i3 5005U processor. It only has four cores um, and probably like, I don't know, like two threads, something like that. Um, and it only has eight gigabytes of RAM, which before it had four gigs and I was able to actually grab a, um, a stick of RAM out of my other laptop, which is even older and surprised it fucking, it worked when I um, plugged it into the motherboard and I was like, wow, that's surprising. So I upgraded to eight gigs. So the first thing that I would do is launch the GNOME software app. Now this is where you'll grab like most of your apps, um, the majority of your apps when it comes to um, you know, installing anything. Um, and I would highly suggest that you go here. If you don't find the app you're looking for, then go on your browser and look through there. Uh, but when you first boot onto this, you'll have a bunch of updates. You'll have like 25 something updates that you'll have to do. Um, and you want to do a, you know, you want to update all of those um, pieces of software and you know any apps that need updates as well and do a restart and actually apply the update um, and then come back when it's actually um, installed so the next thing i would do is if you're running a nvidia gpu you will have to grab your nvidia graphics driver obviously as it's not pre-installed if you're on amd then you're all good uh, because amd has a linux kernel module that works with the linux kernel um, out of the box because the, the amd driver is open source so it works really well with the kernel while nvidia likes to keep this stuff proprietary for now they like to keep this stuff proprietary so you want to go to here search for um, nvidia and find the nvidia linux graphics driver and you want to click install and that's basically it when installing nvidia drivers do a restart and then it will actually be used um, and then to know if it is being used you want to find the nvidia x server um application and it will show a version which will be like 530 or whatever it is for you when you install the nvidia driver now the next thing that i would do in terms of you know making your experience a bit better on gnome um you know if like you don't like this whole gnome experience as you can actually pretty easily change it um which is uh you can grab an app called extension manager um, which is a really good application if you want to install extensions because um, Gnome can let you like customize it with this thing called extensions. So there's a bunch of extensions that you can install. Um, the one, the two that I have is the app indicator and K status notifier item support, which basically adds a little shortcut at the top right, because for some reason Gnome doesn't have any app indicator really. I mean, it has this, which is the closest thing you'll get. But the thing is that only um, like each app, as you can see here, now I'm on software and software will show up. Um, but I don't really like that. So I grab another indicator that's called App Indicator. It's really popular. The majority of people use it. And, um, you know, if any GNOME developers are watching, I would I would really like if you guys changed this to, to back to like the older version, which I'm, I'm pretty sure this was in an older version of GNOME, but they switched it to this, which I think is way worse. But like, it looks cool, looks fancy, um, but this one is just better, I would say. I, I can actually guys show you what it, uh, what it actually looks like. Um, on my main desktop as you can see here i've got obs open um, if i open like some other apps maybe like steam for example 
or um, and as you see there, Steam's up there now. So I would say that's a really good um, extension that you can use. Um, the other one is called Dash to Panel, uh, which basically makes uh, everything very um, Windows-esque. And I just remembered that I should turn off these two things here because I've got it at the top. Uh, system menu, date menu there. And um, yeah, this uh, Dash to Panel is super customizable. You can you know um, display it on all the monitors. You can change the thickness, the length. You can um, show what should actually show up on the panel. You can go to like icon margin, icon uh, padding. Uh, you can change like the running indicator, like right under the shortcuts. You can change these to like, I don't know, like solid or bloody segmented dashes. Um, I actually like dashes. They actually look pretty nice, uh, but I'll leave it on dots for now. Um, and there's a bunch of other things that you can do with it. Now, the next thing that I would do, and this is a very important one, I would say, and it's basically on Fedora, the Firefox version that's pre-installed works great. Uh, but one of the issues that it has is that um, any H.264 um, live streams or any like videos that rely on the h264 codec um, for some reason it works on youtube and i'm pretty sure that's because it's using vp9 um codec instead of h264 but on streams like twitch uh, they will not work so what you have to do is basically go to the fedora documentation website and find the open h.264 which i'll leave in a link in, link in the description for you guys to grab and you want to do this command here which will basically it seems like it's config manager and it will enable the fedora cisco open h264 um, and then you do this one here which will install the gstreamer plugin open h dot 264 mozilla <laughs> open h264 which is basically just a plugin for firefox and after that's done installed um, you can close your firefox reopen it and it should actually work now actually uh, i'll add in an extra one that you guys can do and it's probably the best thing that you could do so you open up your terminal you type sudo dnf install neofetch because you gotta wait no type that wrong you want to you want to uh install neofetch because you know you want to be with the cool kids where you get to show off your your sweet you know distro that you're rocking because uh, people love posting you know reddit posts about the distro they run and it's just it's just a necessary thing you have to do neofetch i've got to wait for these little updates to complete first though and um yeah it's really cool i would say uh showing you know neofetch it's <laughs> it's a pretty pointless application uh, but if you're like i don't know you've customized your linux distro and you want to show it on reddit or something like that then you would type neofetch Actually, i'll do clear <coughs> and then you would type neofetch and then as you can see here it pulls up a nice cool fedora logo in like a text format um and you know it shows your kernel version the, the d you're running the fucking wm you're running um yeah it looks really cool but besides that there's um you know there's lots of apps on here that you can grab some right some that i would recommend if you're like into gaming or you want to run windows software would probably be bottles and you want to grab the flat pack version of bottles and if you don't know what Flatpak is, it's just another package manager on Linux that's getting really popular and a lot of applications are starting to use it um, because basically when like something like bottles would be in uh, .var which is where uh, Flatpak lives for the applications but the thing about Flatpak is that uh, in an application like bottles all of its dependencies do don't rely on the system dependencies um, while you know if you run something like Steam and you install the system version package version which for us would be the rpm version of steam it would use the system dependencies um, and that means it just depends on the applications that the software that you have installed on your system in your root directory while something that's like a flat pack version of steam or bottles or, or lutris or you know any flat pack application um, it would have the dependencies in its own containerized sandboxed environment um, and so that means that basically that app can run on any linux to show with basically no problems and it's basically solved the the issue where like an, <clears throat> an app developer or like a company or whatever tries to release an app on linux and they don't know which uh you know package version to to use because and it basically basically solves a an issue where um a company wants to make an app and they don't know which package manager to use um so now they could just choose flat pack choose the dependencies that they need 
and distribute it on every Linux distro. And anybody that has the Flatpak repository enabled or the Flat Hub repository, um, that app will show up. And so for us, we already have Flat uh, Flat Hub uh, repository already pre-installed on Fedora. Um, so Bottles is a great application if you want to run uh, Windows games um, or Windows software. Um, there's another one that's called Lutris, which a lot of people like as well. I personally don't like it. I don't like its UI. Um, it's layout <clears throat> but it's I've used it plenty of times and it works really good in terms of like if you want to get a piece of like a game up and running like relatively quickly and you don't know what you're doing and you don't know what like different wine versions are or different environment variables or any of that um, Lutus I would say is the best option for you if you want a game to work um, out of the gate you could just you know because one of the things that Lutus uses is, is um, install scripts uh, which are just like basically saying like oh add this add that install that install that and it does it all for you basically and uh, there's another app called cartridges I'd highly recommend this one as well which basically just combines all your games in one place um, within one app so that you don't have to open you know you don't have to open bottles you don't have to open Lutris um, you can just launch it all from uh, this app now the last thing that I would drive would be GNOME tweaks as GNOME tweaks um, basically has a lot of a lot of things in GNOME are hidden by default um, and so things like startup applications, uh, top bar, so like weekday, date, and seconds are really um, things that I enable on my desktop. Uh, it's really useful, I would say. Um, and it also goes with like, you know, window title bars by default on Fedora or just on GNOME in general, uh, maximize and minimize are not enabled. Um, so you can't minimize a window and the only way you can maximize and minimize is basically by dragging um, and, and doing that. So you can easily enable it here and you can also change your appearance. So you don't want to change your icon pack. You want to you know, change the legacy applications to like a lot of dark. That's something that I do. So like all legacy applications run in a dark mode of Eduardo. Um, and yeah, that's basically it, I would say. You can change fonts as well. If you don't like the font of GNOME, you can easily change it here. Um, and yeah, I would say that's about it for installing um, Fedora. Is, you know, everything else is like pre-installed for you nowadays. Like a version ago, like 37, you would have to install some repositories and you may still have to install some repositories if you're installing some other applications. Uh, but that's really it for today's video, I would say, in terms of installing uh, you know, a Linux distro on a um, shitty laptop. Um, if you guys liked it, you guys can give it a like, obviously. Um, you guys can subscribe if you want to. I really don't care, to be honest. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.